Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Apache Cassandra onto a Windows 7 machine. Apache Cassandra is a popular NoSQL database. Uh, it's basically a column family slash key value store. Uh, and what we want to do is go to, uh, let's see, I think it's cassandra.apache.org. All right, and if we click on download, there's a few um, there's a few things that we can do here. Uh, first, we have the core Cassandra server, uh, which includes the Node Tool Administration command line, uh, as well as a development shell called SQL SH. Um, and these come in both tarball binaries and uh, Debian installation. We're using Windows, so uh, if we're going to install the tarball, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, what I would suggest is going with this option uh, using the Datastax community distribution, uh, which comes with all of that, comes with the, the CQL uh, development shell, and also a GUI program called OpCenter, which is really cool and uh, might be a little easier to use for people that don't really uh, use the command line. All right, and in addition to that, uh, the Datastax package offers a Windows installer, all right, which is extremely easy to use. So if we click on Datastax community, it's going to take us to uh, planetcassandra.org slash Cassandra. Down here we have different versions for different uh, platforms. I'm going to grab the Windows 7 32-bit installer. Okay, we can just X out of that, and it's going to ask you to download it. I've already downloaded it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and install that. And it's right here. And very simple, just like any other uh, Windows installation, just go through. Click Next. It's going to ask you where you want to install it. I'll leave it in the default. Here it's going to ask you if you want to start it at uh, Cassandra and Ops Center as a service. And I would suggest keeping them both checked in doing that. Okay, so now we'll install. Okay, so say yes. I'll also be making a video on installing Cassandra um, onto an Ubuntu machine as well. Okay, and this, this installer just makes it really easy. If you were to install everything separately, it'd be a, just a little bit more difficult and you might run into some issues. So it says that the Ops Center agent is starting. Okay, service is starting. Um, just to show you, let's go ahead and launch the Op Center. Okay, so it's going to open up in a browser. And this is what it looks like. It has a really cool interface. Uh, a lot of analytics shows you your storage, your cluster's health, uh, your write requests, disk utilization, your operating system load, all kinds of things. And uh, you can see that it sets us up with a test cluster. All right, and then here you can view your nodes. Okay, obviously we only have one node at the time, at this time. Um, activities, data. I'm not going to really go through and um, create any key spaces or anything like that. I just wanted to show you how to get it up and running. All right, so you can see that we're at localhost and the default port is uh, 8888. Okay, so that's the op center. We also have, if I click on start, you should have a Datastax Community Edition folder and you can see that we have the uh, Cassandra CLI utility we also have the Cassandra CQL shell okay so this is a shell where we can run CQL uh, CQL if you don't know stands for Cassandra Query Language and it's very similar to SQL so if you know uh, if you've dealt with relational databases like MySQL then you already have a, a basic understanding of CQL. 
Now, just to give you an example, um, if you don't know, if you don't know anything about Cassandra and how uh, how its data model is set up, basically we're going to have a key space which represents. I guess it could you could compare it to a schema uh, in a relational database. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is create a a uh, key space. So we can do that with create key space and let's just call it people um, and then we need to do some other things here we need to define um, a replication strategy so we're gonna say with replication uh, and then we're gonna set the replication class I'm gonna set to simple strategy Okay, so basically there's two different uh, classes we can define here. We can have simple strategy or network topology strategy. Uh, simple strategy is used commonly for single data center um, clusters. If you want to set up multiple data centers, you would use network topology. Okay, and then the next thing, the last thing that we want to set here is the replication factor. Don't worry if you don't know if you're not familiar with any of this. Don't worry about it. Uh, basically, the video I just wanted to show you how to install Cassandra, uh, but I'm just going to go a little further here. And uh, the replication factor is basically how many nodes that you want to set for uh, for your replicas. Okay, and I'm just going to say three. All right, and then we want to end with a semicolon. All right, and now we should have our key space. And to check that out, we can say uh, describe key space people. Okay, and now you can see that uh, we have the, the people key space gives us the class and the replication factor. All right, so now that we have our people key space, let's go ahead and create a table. Okay, so just like SQL, we can say create table. Um, Let's create table employees. All right, uh, and we want to set our fields. Okay, so we'll have an ID field, and we can we can set this to a type. For instance, we can say int, but I'm going to set it to a type called UUID, uh, which is a universal identification. So this is basically um, it's going to be a long hexadecimal. Uh, value but it will be unique so that can be used to uh, to grab individual uh, rows alright so we'll have an ID uh, let's also have a name which will be varchar and notice we don't need to uh, define any special length like you would with relational databases uh, just uh, just something that's a little more flexible uh, so we'll have an ID a name and uh, let's just do an email. All right, uh, and then we want to set our primary keys. So let's say primary key. And when using Cassandra, it's a little different than uh, if you're using a relational database. We want to define our primary key as ID. But anything that you want to do things like sort and order by, uh, then you want to you want to um, define those as well. So let's use, we'll just say ID and let's do email. All right. So that should do it. We'll put a semicolon here. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. No key space has been specified. Okay. So we just need to say use. And then the name of the key space, which is people. All right, and then we'll go ahead and run that again. Okay, so now let's go ahead and select all from employees. Uh, hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't we didn't insert anything. We just created a table. Uh, let's say describe table employees okay so that just gives us a bunch of information about the table um, so let's insert something we'll say insert into 
employees. All right, um, and we want to insert an ID. Whoops, an ID, a name, and an email. Okay, and just like SQL, we're going to say values. And for the the ID, which is a UUID, we can use different functions for this. Um, what I'm going to do is use a function called now, and that's going to get a UUID from uh, the current timestamp. All right, and then for the name, we'll say John Doe, and for an email, we'll say jdoe at gmail.com. All right, so that should insert it. Now we can say select all from employees. All right, and then that gives us our record. Okay, so this is the UUID that was created with that now function. Uh, and then we have the email and the name. If we want to insert one more, I'll just go back to the query and let's just change the name. Let's say Sam, uh, Sam Smith and change the email okay and then we'll select and now we have another entry and you can see that the ID is completely different all right so we can also use where statements so let's say select all actually let's just select um, name from employees where email is equal to jdo at gmail.com. Um, hmm. Involve filtering. Use allow filtering. All right, so let's run the same thing and allow filtering. All right, so that gives us John Doe. All right, so I'm not going to get uh, much more in depth in this. I just wanted to show you how to just implement a really simple uh, Cassandra installation and just get you going. Now you can see in the Ops Center, uh, if I reload this here, you can see, you can see that uh, we do have our write requests right here. Um, and if we go to data, you can now see that we have our people key space. We have the employees uh, column family or table. If I check that, you can see uh, what we've done. Okay, we created the table. Um, we can view the metrics. Actually, I don't want to do that. But you can see that uh, we can do things with that key space we created. Okay, we can change the strategy class, um, the replication factor, which we set when we created the key space. We can delete the whole key space if we want. All right, so you can manage uh, everything from this dashboard if you're not comfortable with the command line. All right, so uh, I think that's a, a fair intro to uh, setting up Cassandra on Windows. I will be making some more advanced videos on both Cassandra and um, CouchDB, so uh, please subscribe and just be on the lookout for those. Thanks.